Okay. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today, our topic is uh, VMware Workstation. Uh, basically, in this training, uh, we will be covering how to install uh, VMware Workstation. First, we will start from the introduction of VMware Workstation, and then uh, we will do the practical labs how we can deploy this product and how we can build our own labs on, on the top of this product. So before starting the session, uh, do you guys have any idea regarding VMware? What is VMware? Anyone? Uh, this session is not a webinar or seminar. It's a technical training. So you guys are allowed to ask me question directly whenever you have a question in your mind you can unmute yourself and you can ask question also you guys can uh, write your question in the chat box so uh, I can answer those questions so basically VMware is the name of the company right so if you google VMware you will get to know that what is VMware so basically once you Google VMware, you will get to know that this is basically an American company, American cloud computing and virtualization technology company. And the headquarter of VMware is in California. And this company has a different product set. So if you open the website of the VMware, you can see it has different products for different categories like application in cloud networking workspace security right so even if you click on the see all products you will get to know the product set of the vmware uh, portfolio right so today we are going to discuss vmware workstation which is also called type 2 hypervisor right so basically uh, again there is a question that what is hypervisor so basically hypervisor is a software it can also be an operating system so basically it provides us uh, a facility to virtualize our compute so basically hypervisor has two types one is called type 1 hypervisor right and the second type of hypervisor is type 2 hypervisor right so basically uh, what is type 1 hypervisor type 1 hypervisor can be installed directly on hardware you can install it directly on hardware and then you can create virtual machine what is virtual machine we will also discuss so this is the example of type 1 hypervisor type 2 hypervisor needs an underlying operating system on the top of the hardware so if you have a hardware for example you have a laptop and you have windows 10 installed on your top of your hardware then you can install type 2 hypervisor like this right this is also hypervisor so uh, what are the examples of type 1 hypervisor so basically the today's training is based on the VMware technology so I will only focus on VMware so VMware has a type 1 hypervisor called VMware ESXi and uh, for type 2 hypervisor VMware has two products one is called VMware workstation and the other one is called VMware fusion so if you have Mac operating system installed on your hardware then you have to use VMware fusion and if you have Linux or Windows machine then you can use VMware workstation so what is the benefit of installing hypervisor on top of your hardware so basically uh, if you guys uh, have an idea regarding virtualization technology uh, I believe 
you guys may have heard about virtualization but let me explain it virtualization is basically a technology right which reduce IT cost right so the main purpose of this technology is to reduce IT cost maybe I don't know some of you are system administrator maybe some of you are network engineer right so as you know that most of the organizations are dependent on the uh, uh, their applications for example you are working in uh, an organization and they have different applications like email server dns server dcp server right so what they do basically usually the practice is to uh, put to keep a hardware let's suppose you have a server hardware and then on top of that hardware they install operating system directly like this so we have operating system installed on top of the hardware and then we have application running so this is the traditional way of computing but now industry is changing they are adopting new technology like virtualization cloud computing and containerization i will talk about more uh, about virtual uh, cloud computing and containerization in my other session but in today's session we will be focusing on vmware workstation basically so even if you are not working in organization and even if you have your own personal laptop and you want to install vmware workstation or you want to build a lab this training will be beneficial for you guys uh, even for those who are not in the industry yet uh, so before uh, so normally you can see here this is the normal scenario normally what we do we install operating system on the top of the hardware directly and then we install our application <coughs> right so what is the limitation of this scenario basically you can run single operating system at the same time right and also for example if you have 12 GB of RAM and the utilization of this application is only 4 GB so the remaining 8 GB RAM is not utilizing right but still uh, the 12 GB RAM is always attached to this hardware because sometime uh, it requires more uh, more resources for example uh, sometime you are playing games on your laptop so obviously you will need uh, more resources to run that game but normally when you are not playing that game normally your resources utilization will be uh, less than 20% or 25% or 30% right but <clears throat> using VMware workstation what you can do you can uh, build create virtual machines on top of the uh, your uh, VMware workstation and you can run multiple operating system at the same time so what is the benefit of doing this so basically for example if you are a university student and your supervisor asks you to uh, to create a database right and for that database you required two machines so normally you will go to market and you will purchase two laptops so that's a very uh, I mean it's hard to manage for a student to purchase two laptops but what we can do we can install VMware workstation on our laptop on our operating system and then we can create virtual machine so uh, and then we can run uh, install operating system just like we install operating system on physical machine right and we can run those application right so that's also do even uh, I'm also a trainer basically uh, if you don't know me so basically I'm working in organization uh, is a inside solution architect for VMware technology and also uh, a part of my job uh, I give online trainings and also here in Peshawar I'm working I'm also a trainer at the core links Institute where I teach uh, uh, from Monday to Thursday I do uh, I give online uh, on-site trainings so basically sometime if I have to deliver a training so obviously I need machines for different classes and all these stuff so 
what I do basically I use this virtualization technology to build my labs to give the demos and the trainings and all these stuff even if you are professional and you are working in an organization sometimes you need testing test environment so VMware workstation is also one of the platform where you can <coughs> run your uh, create your lab and uh, you can do a testing of uh, your application is all the stuff so uh, I will pause for a while uh, if you have any question uh, I will take the question from you guys I'm giving you two minutes so you guys can ask me question okay basically uh, mr. Ahmad Ali uh, uh, let me rephrase your question so if you ask me which hypervisor is best I don't have an answer for you because it totally depends on the scenario in the use cases for example you are in production environment right so obviously I would recommend to go for VMware ESXi right but if you are in a, a test environment or if you are using this for a personal purposes then uh, you should use VMware workstation and obviously VMware ESXi is more secure because this is a production industry use uh, uh, hypervisor Uh, Umar Hayat, if you are asking regarding VMware HL, it's not something related to this topic. So I'm really sorry I'm not able to answer this right now. I don't want to confuse audience. <clears throat> but you can ping me after the session and I can answer you. Any other question related to this specific product? I will only take those questions which are related to today's topic, not uh, related to some other uh, portion uh, okay and one more thing guys uh, maybe we got disconnected after five minutes so if you got disconnected feel free to join me again using the same link yep so VMware ESXi will be directly installed on the hardware right it cannot be installed on operating system for example, if you have a laptop and you want to install VMware works, uh, VMware ESXi, so what will happen? All of your data will be lost because the ESXi will format the whole um, uh, form uh, the the disk and with VMFS file system, and then you can access it remotely and you can uh, build your labs. <coughs> uh, I'm going to pass. So. This is one of my laptop, one of my machine, right? Windows 10 machine. And I have also ESXi installed on the other hardware. I do have another hardware, which is ESXi installed. So let me access that hardware for you guys. So basically, uh, the one I'm accessing right now, I have a Dell hardware, right? It's a workstation, it's a desktop machine. And this is my one of the ESXi hosts. I just access it for you. So the hardware is Dell uh, product Precision T3600 and it has 8 CPUs in one socket. It has 32 GB of RAM. So I have installed hypervisor directly on this hardware and I have built around 25 virtual machines in a, and this is my this is what I'm doing for my training purposes and this is my uh, type 1 hypervisor right and in today's session I will show you uh, how we can install this product which is this one VMware workstation so I'm going to open it so today we will only talk about type 2 hypervisor that how we can uh, use how we can install this product how we can do the basic configuration of this product and how we can create virtual machines how we can install operating system on the top of the virtual machine and then what are VMware tools and how we connect these virtual machines with each other so totally we will be discussing regarding VMware workstation and uh, maybe our session goes to almost the timing will be almost around three hours or something like that so just stay with me uh, for three hours so you can learn 
uh, all the the components of this problem so again i will uh, still give you a time because we only have one minute left for the session to disconnect it and once we reconnect and then we will start the lab but in the meantime if you have any question feel free to ask me questions so uh, i can help you uh, with all your confusion and mr uh, umar hayat vmware hl doesn't require any ram resources because it's a cloud based uh, thing so you can directly access it just like you are accessing facebook and you don't need anything so you can feel free to use vmware hl without any hesitation vmware hl doesn't use your local resources it's a cloud based uh, access and you can play with the vmware labs okay guys so let's take a break for only 30 seconds and then we can connect back so basically uh, i uh, divided this topic into uh, steps so in the first step what we will learn basically we will discuss the how we can install this product and this one so in step number one installation of vmware workstation will be done right so this would be the first step so before starting the first step first of all what we have to do we will have to enable virtualization technology from bios so let's suppose you have a laptop right so what you will do so if you have let me show you something let's suppose you have a, a dell server a dell laptop or whatever you have you have to visit you have to go to bios setting of your machine and you have to enable virtualization technology right so i think normally uh, these days in every machine we do have this technology uh, supportable so you have to go to your bios setting and you have to enable virtualization technology from bios so this would be the first step and then again your laptop or hardware must have at least 4 gb of ram i would recommend 8 gb of ram but it totally depends on uh, your scenario so in this laptop the one laptop i am using right now i have 16 gb of ram installed on this machine right so i have this machine installed so i will be using this laptop for today's session so first of all uh, let's suppose you have this hardware this is your laptop and you want to install a vmware workstation so download vmware workstation from vmware site so you can simply write download vmware workstation 16 because the latest version is 16 you can download it right so once you download vmware workstation this file will be downloaded this is the installation file i already downloaded the file right so this is one of the uh, file so once you download it just simply install this uh, uh, application on your laptop Give me one second guys i have a call coming yep so finally we are uh, going to install this product vmware workstation 16 <coughs> right this is the latest product uh, you can install it uh, you can use it for 30 days is a trial version and after that you need to purchase a license key right
So let's do the installation stuff first and after that uh, we can uh, play with other options. But in the meantime, whenever if there is a, a waiting time, you guys can ask me question. So this is your day. I could also record the session and I could upload it to the YouTube channel. But the purpose of this session is so people can ask me question and I interact with people. So feel free to ask me question. Uh, you can just hit next. <laughs> Uh, Hello. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Manoj. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Yeah. How are you? I'm oh, fine, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, sir, actually, I just have a question that actually I uh, uh, I'm having a five-year experience in IT operation, and recently I started to learn DevOps. Mm -hmm. So, how VMware is will be helpful for me? Okay. Uh, okay. I will answer this question. Just let me finish the installation step and then uh, during installation time, I will explain your, uh, I will give you the answer, right? Uh, okay, sir. And uh, one more request, sir. Actually, I have mailed you regarding the VMware installation uh, license key. Mm -hmm. As you as you promised last uh, session, in the last session that you will provide. Uh, okay, so basically, uh, you can uh, check this option because for uh, all the features, if they are required, but some feature uh, may require uh, the, inst the restart of the machine. So make sure that whenever you are installing VMware Workstation, uh, you are not doing anything else because your laptop will be restarted for one time. And if you want to join VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program, you can check this button. If you want to check for updates, so you can check this button. If not, you can uncheck that and you can do manually check of updates. And this is how you can install VMware Workstation. So installation is very simple, just like MS Office installation. Once you install VMware Workstation, right, this icon will be appeared. This is a shortcut will be appeared on your desktop and your VMware Workstation is now ready. So we are almost done with the installation step that how we can install VMware Workstation. Uh, Manoj, uh, for you, basically you asked me a question regarding uh, DevOps. So feel free to search for vSphere Tanzu, right? Uh, first you have to search this. So whenever you are done with this and you can then ping me that how this VMware technology can be helpful for a DevOps engineer, right? So I do have stu students which are, uh, who are working on DevOps side and they are still, uh, they still want to learn this vSphere technology, right? So, I would highly recommend you to go for this article. This is a docs.vmware.com, vSphere with Tenzu, and you will get to know how this vSphere or VMware technology can be helpful for you as a DevOps engineer. So finally, uh, the installation is done. I think uh, because we, we got an error, the reason you can ignore it, because uh, I was doing some other labs on this machine, which is why it is giving me an error. But in your case, you won't get any error and your product will be installed like this. So once your product in, is installed, the second step would be how to configure basic configuration of VMware Workstation. So what does it mean? Basically, if you have a laptop like this, let's suppose this is your laptop, so this is your hardware and on top of your hardware you have Windows 10 installed for example, right? So this is your machine and on top of this machine you have VMware Workstation installed. So we just installed VMware Workstation on top of our machine. 
So what is the purpose of installing VMware Workstation? So we can create virtual machines and we can install operating system and we can run different operating system on our machine. Right? <clears throat> so this is the main purpose. So what is the uh, purpose of configuration of VMware Workstation? So for example, if you are building a virtual machines, where the virtual machine data will be stored right so this is something we have to define in uh, our vmware workstation by default when we create a virtual machine the virtual machine files will be stored on the c drive right but suppose your machine doesn't have that much space on your c drive like you can see here i have 46 gb of free space in my c drive but I have a lot of free space in my tree drive. So what I will do, first of all, I will create a folder on my D drive. Uh, test VMs, whatever you uh, give it a name. So let's suppose this is my folder. And on VMware Workstation, you can go to Edit Preferences. And from Preferences, you can change the location of the uh, the virtual machine like this so once you change it you can click ok and you are done so this was the basic configuration of your vmware workstation so for now we are doing that configuration and after that we will get to know what other configuration are required during the uh, in for the installation or creating virtual machine so my default option is now uh, this one the my virtual machine folder right so once I, uh, whenever I create a virtual machine, all the data will be stored on the uh, that folder, that specific folder. So we are almost done with step number two as well, which is a basic configuration of VMware Workstation. <clears throat> what would be the next step? The next step would be creation of virtual machine. What is virtual machine? First, we have to know about virtual machine. So just give me one second, guys. I'm going to pause. Are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. So as you can see here, this slide explains regarding virtual machine. So basically, a virtual machine is a software representation of a physical computer and its components the virtualization software vmware workstation right converts the physical machine and its component into files so just like on the physical machine we have memory cpu network adapter desks we can attach usb the same all the things can be applied to the virtual machine as well right so that's possible I mean you can run operating system just like you are installing operating system on physical machine you can run your application just like we run application on physical machine right so this is the components of the virtual machine and when we create a virtual machine a folder is created right and all the files of virtual machine are stored in that folder and let me give you an example you can see here uh, as i discussed that uh, this is my one of the esxi host so this is type 1 hypervisor the one i'm accessing right now uh, let me show you something so how many virtual machine I have? I have around 25 virtual machine. And if I browse my data store, I can see, let's suppose this virtual machine, uh, this one. So as you can see here, this is one of my virtual machine. I have this disk. This is the disk of the virtual machine. This is the configuration of the virtual machine and all these stuff and you can also see uh, on my this machine i have created multiple virtual machines so 
let me show you the files of this windows 10 you can see here i have windows 10 virtual machine here i have already installed operating system and everything is installed this vm has 2 gb of ram 2 cpu 60 gb disk it has a dvd it has a network adapter it has a usb controller it has a sound card it has a test display right so this is my virtual machine and the virtual ma this virtual machine is stored in which location in d drive virtual machine folder so if i open that folder i can see these are the files which combines a virtual machine right so these are the virtual machine files okay uh, so again uh, sajid you ask me a very good question basically sajid question is that for example if we have 8 gb of ram <coughs> in our system that what will be the limit of assigning RAM for guest operating system so basically uh, you can <coughs> assign up to 8 GB of RAM sometime even more than that because we have a concept called swapping and paging but I will not recommend that if you have 8 GB of physical RAM and your virtual machine is also configured with 8 GB RAM this is not a good practice right so at least that should be 7 GB or 6 GB, right? And uh, I have many things to explain about this topic because the, the, the question you asked me is something related to architecture level or design level. So we have a, a, a ton of documentation for on VMware website, uh, VMware doc site. You can also read those and you can uh, get to know about uh, how much RAM we can assign. But I will try to explain it that how much RAM we can assign to a virtual machine if we have that much of physical RAM. So very good question, Saj. Any other question, guys, before I move forward? So I believe you must be clear that what are the virtual machine, what are the purpose of virtual machine? So basically, we can run operating system on virtual machine and what are the benefits of virtual machine give me one second again I'm going to so I believe you are able to see my screen right now so in this diagram you can see <coughs> we have uh, a hardware this is my laptop or desktop or server hardware normally we install operating system directly on hardware right but in virtualization technology we can install hypervisor on hardware so basically this example is of the type 1 hypervisor but for you guys I will write I will make it a type 2 so for example your laptop has operating system installed and on top of that operating system you have installed VMware workstation and then you have created virtual machine so what are the benefits of virtualization as you can see here in this diagram we can only run single operating system on a one time but here we can run multiple operating system and interesting thing is if this machine if this operating system if this is a Linux operating system that's fine and this is let's suppose your Windows machine operating system that's also fine so even you can run different platform operating system on single hardware so again you will ask me how is it possible because every virtual machine has its own virtual disk so every virtual machine has its its own virtual disk and the format of that virtual disk is .vmdk file so when we install operating system when we are installing operating system or when we are keeping some data on virtual disk so basically the operating system this uh, machine operating system will format this virtual disk and not the physical disk right so you don't have to worry even if you have a virtual machine you are installing something you are formatting something you are doing partitioning you don't have to worry because the virtual machine will only affect the virtual hard disk and not the physical disk right yep <clears throat> basically the the vmware workstation or esxi these are called hypervisor so the job of a hypervisor is to share the physical resources among virtual machines, right? So it can give access to multiple virtual machines to use the physical hardware like RAM, CPU, 
and uh, uh, networking and storage right does it answer your question Manoj <clears throat> okay perfect any other question guys looks like we have a uh, few people who are asking question and the other are just a listener so don't be a listener unmute yourself and ask me questions so I can answer you okay I think we should move forward so now let's start with the lab that how we can create virtual machine so there are uh, sorry, sorry there are different methods of creating virtual machines method number one create virtual machine and uh, assign the RAM and do the configuration and install operating system and install application and all these things so in in, uh, in one method we can do we can create we have to create virtual machine and then install operating system and then install application this is one method second method you can download virtual appliance so what are virtual appliance so feel free to google it virtual appliance <clears throat> so basically a virtual appliance is a pre-configured virtual machine is there anyone who is Linux expert anyone in the participant we don't have anyone this is just like uh, in uh, uh, DevOps, we use uh, basically AMI, Amazon Virtual uh, Amazon Machine Image, that uh, have a predefined AM uh, hardware, just like uh, 2 GB of RAM and 8 GB of hard disk space. Perfect. So, do you are you guys familiar with? Uh, uh, let's okay. Let me explain it. Basically, uh, I don't know if you are from uh, which uh, industry or what are your current skills. So, for example, you are a security expert in your organization, right? And they ask you to implement a firewall, right? So, basically, uh, if you are a, a, a security guy and your organization chose Fortinet firewall, I believe you guys would be familiar with Fortinet firewall, right? So, this is one of the famous next generation firewall so you have two options option number one you can go to market and you can purchase this box this is a physical box right so you can purchase this box and you can deploy this box in your data center and you can secure your network and you have another option you can download virtual appliance of Fortinet firewall and you can deploy it as an VM on the top of your ESXi hypervisor just like you can see here this is my ESXi type 1 hypervisor and I have this Palo Alto firewall deployed this is my Palo Alto firewall you can see here or on in this uh, Fortinet sorry in VMware workstation you can see I have a VM named firewall so this is a virtual appliance which I just deployed it on my VMware workstation and I can do the networking configuration and I can use this virtual machine as in firewall so we have learned two methods and one method we have learned that how we can create I mean we will create the virtual machine from start and the other method you just need to download this Fortinet firewall uh, appliance or any other appliance for example you are uh, a university student and your teacher asks you to install database and you don't know how to install database so just write Oracle virtual appliance right 
so you can download it for example uh, someone asks you to install uh, exchange server right and you are not uh, you don't know how to install exchange server so there is also a, a virtual machine marketplace vmware marketplace vmware market place this is a website once you visit that website you will uh, see different virtual appliances some of them are free and some of them are purchasable and you can also create your own appliance right you can also you can see here dell emc fortinet appliance right so you can download these appliances and you can run these appliances as an you can import these appliances as a virtual machine on the top of your hypervisor that's it so mo before moving forward do you guys have any question and we do have another option <coughs> uh, of uh, deploying virtual machine which is not related to today's topic but you can deploy uh, a virtual machine from template right so first of all for example if you have a big environment and someone asks you to create 10 virtual machines and install server 2019 on those virtual machine and then install uh, web services right so instead of install creating 10 virtual machine and installing server operating system 10 times you can create a base operating uh, a virtual machine you can create one virtual machine you can convert that virtual machine into template and from that template you can deploy multiple virtual machine of your own yeah i don't have an idea about uh, free bsd uh, i don't know what are you talking about yes trueness yeah you are talking about trueness yep we can do that mr pavan it's something possible right okay so what we have learned so far that we have different options to create virtual machine but let's do the basic thing so i will click on create a virtual machine here we have two options one is called typical if you are new if you are beginners use typical option if you know this product set and if you are good with the virtualization then use custom option so i will use custom option so at least i can explain more option with you guys so you guys can learn the different options so i'm going for custom but feel free to use typical option if you are doing uh, your lab right so i just click custom option here i can see virtual machine hardware compatibility so basically we can see here uh, by default the hardware compatibility option is 16.2 i don't know if you guys are familiar with vmware workstation 12 10 14 15 can someone raise your hand or can someone just write in the chat box that which vmware workstation version i mean what was the vmware workstation version when you started this thing or if you are new it's fine but is there anyone who has already worked on vmware workstation okay so tamil is basically using 16 any other if you guys work on vmware 15 vmware workstation 15 or 14 or 12 or 10 wow so Pavan, okay. So let's start with Pavan. So basically, he has installed. He has used okay, 14 version. For example, <coughs> okay, thank you. Looks like I thought you guys are sleeping, but I was wrong. Basically, let's suppose I have VMware Workstation 14 installed here and I have VMware workstation 16 installed here 
so by default the VMware workstation 16 can run these virtual machine this is possible but we cannot run these virtual machine on top of this product the reason is this VMware workstation 16 hardware is higher than this one right so VMware workstation 14 has the capability to run virtual machine compatible with VMware workstation 14 and the older version right like 12 and 10 so if we have VMware workstation 10 virtual machine <coughs> VMware workstation 14 is capable of running those virtual machine right so if you have two machines one machine has VMware workstation 14 and the other machine has 16 and you want to run we these virtual machine also on VMware workstation 14 then from here you should select workstation 14.x so your hypervisor is 16 but your virtual machine which we are creating right now that hardware compatibility will be uh, up to uh, 14 so you can run it <coughs> but you may lose some of the features like you can see here when I select workstation 14 the limitation of RAM is 64 GB 16 and all these stuff so let me take a screenshot of this and then we can change the setting like this so let me take a screenshot so I just copy this and let me paste it here okay now let me change the setting to 16 and let me take a screenshot again feel the difference so if someone tells you that hey there is no difference between VMware workstation 14 and 16 so let me show you the difference VMware workstation 14 has a limitation of 64 GB of RAM so if you have a hardware with maximum RAM and you want to create a virtual machine more than 64 GB of RAM then 14 is not a good platform so here you can see 16 VMware workstation 16 has a capability of running 128 GB of RAM 32 processor can be assigned to a virtual machine 10 networks adapter so almost everything is other are same but okay we have a graphic memory here right graphic card capability so if you have uh, a game you want to run on the virtual machine of 16 you can run it right so this is the story and just stay with me for a while let me show you some other thing interesting thing okay look at this diagram guys this diagram is uh, for the VMware workstation, sorry, VMware ESXi, VMware ESXi 7.0, right? So, VMware ESXi 7.0 can have a capability to run a virtual machine with 6 TB of RAM, right? So on VMware ESXi, you can run a VM with this much configuration of RAM. It has 256 CPU supported, supportable, right? And these are the virtual. So this diagram explains a virtual machine of VMware ESXi, right? And these are the configuration of VMware Workstation. Uh, virtual machine so feel the difference between workstation 14 and 16 and also feel the difference between type 1 hypervisor and type 2 hypervisor right so let me move forward before uh, moving forward do you guys have any question
again uh, after one minute our session will be disconnected so feel free to join me again using the same link okay okay basically yes uh, mr gohar your question is a little bit confusing are you talking about VMware is basically the name of the company, right? So if you are asking me that can we install multiple VMs in a single VMware, can we create multiple virtual machine? Yes, we can create multiple virtual machine like this. You can see here on the left side, you can see I have multiple virtual machines created here. And even you can see here on top of type one hypervisor, you can see I have multiple virtual machine and different virtual machine are running. You can see these are my MCC uh, lab. Uh, guys, let's take a break for 30 minutes, 30 seconds. So, so that was all about VMware Workstation and <coughs> the this uh, specific uh, version. Okay, so let's move forward. I think there should be no question regarding this uh, option. Once we click next, it will ask you, uh, these are three options, right? So first option means, uh, okay, so what does this option mean? Basically, uh, it's up to us which option we should use, but I would highly recommend that you should use this option. I will install the operating system later because currently we are not going to install operating system. We are just creating a virtual machine. So whenever you are doing this thing, make sure you select this option. You can also directly attach ISO, but during installation, some of the steps will be ignored, right? So best option is to use this option and click next. Once you click next, it will ask you that what should be the virtual machine uh, hardware? I mean, you have to select. So let's suppose if you are going to install Windows 10, then you should select Microsoft Windows and under this drop down menu, make sure you select the right version of Windows 10. So for example, this is my Windows 10, right? So make sure you have selected the right version. Uh, Sometimes people think that we can ignore these configuration, but that's not uh, recommended. Make sure that you must select this. If you are installing Linux operating system, mm -hmm. we have a bunch of Linux operating system listed here. Yes. Yes, uh, sir. I have a question mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the guest operating system segment, the Microsoft Windows, Linux, VMware and other operating system is showing the drop down menu so sir if you want to um, install some different uh, os like uh, mac os when uh, how to install that okay very good question basically if your uh, concern operating system is not listed here then you can select other and from here you can select uh, different options right so for example you have you are installing uh sorry uh let's suppose uh let's suppose you are installing microtech so microtech router os you are installing so maybe microtech router os is not listed here then you should visit vmware site that microtech router os virtual machine options right so they will tell you that which specific option you should use for Microtech router OS, which controller you should use and all these stuff. So this is the documentation. So you first you have to Google it that which controller and which uh, specific thing we should use for installing Microtech and then you can go for it, right? So this will explain you everything. Does it answer your question? Sir, different, uh, yes, sir. Different OS, sir, like Mac OS is uh, enabled. Is possible to install in VM? Oh, very good question. Basically, 
make operating system can only be run on Apple devices, right? So if you have a Mac machine, uh, Apple machine, Apple hardware, then you can run uh, make operating system on your virtual machine and one more thing this there is also a possibility to run make operating system on virtual machine even if you have a Dell hardware so it has uh, uh, a prerequisites so you have to do some pre-installation steps before doing that like a cheats like just like in old days we used to install I think OpenStack or what's the name BlueStack uh, is the name of that software which we can install on your laptop and you can run Android uh, apps on your Windows machine but now Windows 11 has that capability by default so yes I would say yes you can run make operating system on your VMware workstation as well I personally tried it which is why I'm saying yes okay any other question guys before i move forward no sir okay perfect here you can define any name for example windows 10 test i just write and you can see the default folder is this one because from preferences we have already changed this folder and you can even change the location for this specific virtual machine now what should be firmware type uh, it should be BIOS or UEFI if you are operating system support that capability you can use UEFI if not you can use BIOS it's up to you guys what should be number of processors so again it totally depends on your physical machine so let me see how many processor I have on this machine so I have total four cores why it is showing four cores normally it has a single socket my laptop has a single processor with two cores but here I can see four core the reason is hyper threading there is a technology a CPU technology when you have hyper threading available on your machine then uh, it will show you the double of your physical cores. so we have total of four cores which means that on each for each virtual machine I can assign up to four CPUs and not more than four CPUs that would be the case right so currently I'm using number of processor 2 that's fine let's suppose number of processor 1 and cores 2 so there there will be one socket with two cores so it's again it's a very in-depth discussion of sockets core threads so let's keep it simple, and simple uh, sir I have a question mm -hmm. sir uh, if you say that uh, uh, two core or two uh, thread like uh, um, virtualization types of uh, uh, VTD technology some Intel use mm -hmm. so sir uh, when when we uh, run two uh, OS in v, uh, in VMware workstation it is possible simultaneously two operating system is running okay very good question so your question is that suppose you have total of two cores physical right yes sir. and you have assigned two cores to this one and you have assigned two cores to this one yes this is possible how is it yes, possible? yes. the reason is when we assign uh, resources to a virtual machine maybe the use of this virtual machine is only single core so hypervisor will reclaim the free resource the free cores from the virtual machine and it will assign it to this virtual machine again maybe you have a question that suppose there is a time when both virtual machine are utilizing two cores maybe there is a workload or an, an, in a certain time right so in that case still though the two virtual machine will be running but uh, the hypervisor will do a time sharing like it will stop one 
stop the process of one virtual machine and it will give all the resources to the another virtual machine so again that is something also possible but uh, your performance will be impacted so we have th this is a vmware workstation so some uh, lagging issue is present sorry uh, sir when the two cores is utilized in uh, in uh, vmware workstation there will uh, two, be uh, open system mm -hmm. simultaneously so uh, the um, issue is uh, lagging more lagging exactly so the performance will be affected right and your yes, virtual yes, machine sir. will be running slow so uh, yes yes in vmware workstation the vmware workstation is just a personal use platform but in esxi yes, yes. in uh, in advanced setting i mean uh, if you have uh, a vcenter server and if you have vsphere environment then we can use a product named vrealize so that vrealize will give you a report of your environment that hey your environment health is very weak you have to do something right so best practice is to move some of the virtual machine from this hardware to another hardware right or you can upgrade your physical hardware resources right so in yes this, yes yeah so we can do that so again this mm. vm will have a two cores and now how much ram will uh, in this for uh, in this uh, wizard you can assign a ram so let's suppose i'm going to assign 2 gb of ram again if you have a virtual machine with 2 gb of ram uh, let me show you practically as you can see here i have this esxi hypervisor and i have a virtual machine this one how much ram i have assigned 10 GB of RAM is assigned but the utilization of this RAM is only 5.43 GB so the remaining 5 GB or whatever RAM is it's not utilizing right so you can see here 8.3 GB RAM is sorry 1.6 GB RAM is in use and 8.3 GB RAM is still available and I have configured this VM with 10 GB of RAM right so again if you can see here uh, in this environment I have one two and three three virtual machine are running this VM has 4 GB of RAM this VM has 10 GB and this VM is configured with 10 GB so total 24 GB RAM is assigned but here I can see uh, I can only see 17.32 GB RAM is utilized right and the reason is there are some other applications uh, uh, services running which is why it is utilizing right so that's the story uh, sir uh, please explain it again please sir uh, sorry, which one? Uh, sorry, uh, this uh, RAM utilized purpose. Yes, sir. It is in this. Okay, so basically, it totally depends on the virtual machine. Uh, let's suppose uh, in uh, in your personal machine, like if you have to install Windows 10, so you can assign 4 GB RAM, 2 GB RAM based on the available resources to you have. So I have a test environment, so I'm going to assign 2 GB RAM, right? So if 1 GB RAM is using, so the remaining 1 GB, the, the ESXi hypervisor behavior is, sorry, the VMware workstation behavior is that it will only give those resources which are utilized, which are used by the virtual machines. Uh, Manoj, we can run multiple virtual machines at the same time if you have a much resources available. If you don't have a resource available, then it's not a good practice to run virtual machine. But here you can see I have multiple virtual machines running. One, two, and three. So here you can use assign the, uh, the RAM and all the stuff related to RAM. 
okay network type okay just keep in mind that every virtual machine has vram vcpu vdisk and vnic right so every virtual machine has all these resources which we have in a physical machine like in our laptop we have ram cpu disk and NIC. so when we create a virtual machine by default uh, a, a single network adapter is attached but you can attach up to 10 virtual network adapter so here you can see that what type of network do you want to add so basically we have different option one is bridging one is net one is host only so we do have a topic of virtual networking right so for now i will keep a default option but once we start that topic then i will explain you that which option is used for which purpose right so for now just keep it as as it as a default so you can click next and from here you can see uh, the controller type so which SCSI controller do you want to use for this specific virtual machine so again use the recommended option the default option because we uh, VMware workstation already know that which controller is best for which operating system so if you remember if you notice during creation of virtual machine we know we uh, selected that we are going to install Windows 10 so I selected Windows 10 and then uh, by default the LSI logic SAS controller is uh, selected but you can change it based on your use cases right so if you have a use case if you have a requirement you can also change the controller type as well again what should be the virtual disk type whether it should be a SATA, SCSI, IDE, or NVMe. So I'm, uh, to be honest, I am not aware of these storage disk types, but you can keep it a default version. But if there is a specific use case or specific requirements of you selecting a specific controller, specific disk type, then you should you can have an option of these ports, right? So these are the four options for your virtual disk type. Okay, select a disk. As I mentioned that, so as I mentioned that every virtual machine will have a virtual disk, right? Because on virtual machine we have to install operating system, right? So uh, we need a storage for uh, attached to a virtual machine so we can store our, the data of the virtual machine and we can install operating system on a virtual machine right so that's the story so we need a virtual disk right so uh, every virtual machine has a virtual disk uh, we can attach a virtual machine uh, sorry virtual disk to a virtual machine and the vmware workstation virtual machine is uh, type is vmdk file right so what will happen if i select create a new disk a new virtual disk will be attached to this virtual machine and a file will be created and that file for name will be dot vmdk right vmdk file and if someone asks you regarding if if you are familiar uh, of hyper v so basically hyper v use dot vmdx right uh, the the virtual disk type of hyper v is dot v sorry vhdx and the uh, vmware virtual machine file type is dot vmdk so a file will be created right so in next step we will have to define a, a space that how much storage capacity will be required for this specific virtual machine use an existing virtual disk what does it mean for example you already have a vmdk file and that file has already data stored just like 
uh, I will give you an example of real scenario. Uh, let's suppose uh, you are purchasing a new laptop, right? So you have purchased a laptop and with the new hard disk, right? Which is formatted. And let's suppose you purchase a laptop and you uh, uh, told the the shopkeeper that hey I don't need a disk on my laptop because I already have a hard disk available and it has already my old data available so you purchase a laptop without a hard disk and you are you attach your old hard disk to your laptop and it has and you just install operating system on C drive and uh, and your D and E drive has all of your data stored so that is also possible and you can use this file use an existing virtual disk so before discussing this physical disk scenario any question in these two options mr imran mr ahmad jamroz manoj yasin pavan thamal varun sir mm -hmm. In this scenario, you say that dot .vdmk file in virtualization and ESXi file dot uh, .college dot .dmx. No, no, so, no. So uh, can Sorry. we run? Sorry, let yes. me, let me, I think you got me wrong. Basically, I told you that if you have a VMware virtual machine, so that file will be dot .vmdk and if you have Microsoft Hyper-V virtual machine. So that file will be .vhdx. So two different disk type. So if you have a virtual machine of Veeam, uh, if you have a virtual machine of VMware hypervisor and you want to run that virtual machine on Microsoft Hyper-V, you won't be able to run that virtual machine on Hyper-V. First, you need to convert that virtual machine to Hyper-V virtual machine format. So there are converter available, like uh, usually we do projects. So I'm also working in, as I mentioned that I'm also in the industry. So sometime uh, some organization wants to migrate their workload from Hyper-V to VMware or some want to migrate from VMware to Hyper-V. So in that case, we use converter, right? Yes, yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Uh, or, uh, sir, uh, the question is my side that dot .vdmk file VMDK. is only uh, work, uh, VMDK file only work in VM, uh, VMware Workstation 16 Pro. That the ESXi uh, host file can run in this uh, VMware Workstation Pro yes. or convert. Yes, yes, yes. In, Basically, VMware ESXi and VMware v Workstation both are VMware product. So it has a support. Yes, yes. So if you have a virtual machine here on your VMware Workstation, you can copy this virtual machine and you can run that virtual machine on top of the ESXi. That is possible. Okay. As long as you okay. have a compatible version. Right? Right. Okay, so very uh, basically, I think we still have two minutes to explain this. So let me explain it here. So basically, what happened? Normally, if you have this hardware, if you are showing my screen, and you have operating system installed, and you have VMware workstation install and you have this virtual machine. So this is your hardware. This is your OS. And this is your VMware workstation installed. And this is your VM. So for example, you have Windows 10 installed. And you have 100 GB of disk. So if you have Windows 10 installed, this 100 GB disk will be formatted in NTFS file system, right? So when we create a virtual machine, a .vmdk file is created, a virtual disk. 
and when we install operating system on top of this virtual machine here so it will use uh, this vmdk file to store the data so if you have disk number two on your attached to your hardware and you have another virtual machine and you don't want to create a virtual disk and you don't want this vm to store data on virtual disk but you want to give access to the physical disk to this virtual machine so that's also possible so in advanced level uh, we call it raw device mapping raw device mapping raw device mapping means that we are allowing a virtual machine to store data directly on physical disk instead of virtual disk so this is also a scenario so let's connect one minute later and then i can exp explain it in a better way right give me one second let's take a so i believe uh, you should be able to understand now that uh, create a new virtual disk mean we are attaching a new disk existing and use a physical disk mean that we are going to uh, give access to a virtual machine to store data directly on physical disk usually the data will be stored in a vmdk so i'm going for this option now create a new virtual disk and you can for example you can give it 60 or 100 gb right so if you click this button allocate all disk space now what will happen in advanced level uh, maybe if you are uh, i also give training on vmware es6i i mean if you want to learn this technology and depth i have a 40 hours training uh, usually i'm going to start a new batch in february inshallah so if you are interested you can join the demo session at least my first week will be demo right and that is regarding that training is regarding uh, vmware uh, if you click on vmware certification website so that training is regarding uh, data center virtualization it's a complete training and this would be the training right install configured and manage so vmware vsphere is a product name uh, which is used in industry these days right so i'm going to paste the link for you guys so you can uh, read something this is a five days 40 hours training eight days per day so basically i covered four hours uh, per week and it has this is basically a 10 modules training right so this is a complete training to understand this whole technology so we are only studying vmware workstation right now but if you want to learn more about this technology and if you want to uh, to make it your career then you have to start from vmware vsphere so let me explain these options uh, allocate all disk space means basically uh, let me write here virtual disk has two types one is called thin provision virtual disk and the other is called thick provision maybe I uh, write the spellings wrong uh, incorrectly but forgive me for that thick provision and thin provision so what does it mean what is thin provision and what is thick provision let's suppose if you have a virtual machine with 100 GB of thin provision disk right so and the disk size is 10 GB but the data stored on the disk is only 10 GB data is stored. Right? The VMDK, VMDK size will be 10 GB only. And 
in thick provision right in thin provision sorry and in thick provision if you have a virtual machine of 10 gb size and you have only stored 2 gb of data right the vmdk size will be still 20 gb so thick provision is like a reservation of your storage like get, let me give you an example uh, example with this one uh, as you can see here I have this virtual machine it has 100 GB assigned data assigned but if I expand the virtual uh, the disk size it shows that this virtual machine hard disk is thin provision right what's the name of this virtual machine ka sur 2019 2 pm dc so let me browse this virtual machine so when i browse this virtual machine ka uh, server 2 pm this one and if i click on the vmdk size so it only shows that this virtual machine size is only 9.7 gb which means that only 9.7 gb data is stored in this virtual machine so it will only utilize the space of the physical uh, uh, your your laptop right so do not select allocate all disk space now because if you select this option it will convert your virtual disk into thick provision and thick provision means that uh, how much space you define here that much space will be minus from your physical disk are you getting this okay no answers looks like you are good okay perfect now let's explain stored virtual disk is a single file or multiple files so if you select single file option what will happen a single vmdk file will be created and if your virtual machine has 20 gb data stored your vmdk size will be 20 gb right so in future if you want to move that virtual machine and you have you don't have a USB device of having 20 GB of space then it would be a problem for you guys to move that virtual machine so by default the option is multiple file what will happen in multiple files multiple VMDK files of 2 to GB space will be created just like let me show you here uh, this is one of my Windows 10 machine and as you can see here it has multiple vmdk's files right so multiple vmdk files will give you a facility to move a virtual machine in an easy way for example you have a virtual machine with 30 gb of uh, total size right and you have multiple files virtual disk of that virtual machine then you can move some of the files in one step and then move other files on the second step and third step and so on but again uh, if you have a big uh, virtual machine with having multiple data right then I would highly recommend to use a single file in ESXi we don't have multiple files option available in ESXi every virtual machine has a single file right but in VMware Workstation, you have an option for that because it's a, a personal use hypervisor. And so I believe you should be uh, okay with these options. So it totally depends that if you want to keep multiple files for virtual disk or you want to keep a single file. So let me use a single file for now for this VM. So only a single VMDK file will be stored in all of data will be stored in single VMDK file you can click next and you can also change the location or you can change the name of the VMDK and finally we have created Sir, what is this? 
suitable use for this uh, allocated space or any other the hardware requirement basically if you have a virtual machine and you want to install database right right so it's a critical virtual machine and you don't want other vms to utilize the free space of that virtual machine so the best option is to use thick provision for that specific virtual machine so once you create that virtual machine it will reserve all the assigned hard disk storage space uh, for uh, itself on the physical disk so that's the use case for that scenario usually in production environment most i have seen many people they are only using thin provision settings they don't use the all allocated all space now but for some critical virtual machine they do they can use it's a rare situation are we good manoj yes sir perfect so we have learned that how we can uh, step three is done perfect now let's start with step number four configuration okay virtual machine management virtual machine management means that if you have this virtual machine you can edit virtual machine settings you can change the memory option you can change the processor options you can add another hard disk like this so now this virtual machine has two hard disk now as you can see here you can remove existing resources you can attach another network adapter and up to 10 network adapters can be attached so now this vm has two network adapter so some of the hardwares can be attached even if the virtual machine is running but for some changes you need to shut down the virtual machine for example if you want to change the memory setting the ram setting then you first need to shut down the virtual machine and then you can do that but you can attach network adapter and hard disk even if the virtual machine is running and if you have to remove a hardware from the virtual machine then it's necessary that your virtual virtual machine should be off right and like this so i believe uh, you should be good with these options right we have options we can change the name we can change the operating system format from here we can change the location we can change the bios setting from here so these are the different options which we can perform uh, using edit virtual machine setting so that was step number four in which we have learned that how we can do that now step number five install guest operating system we are going to install guest up guest operating system mean operating system install on virtual machine so you have different options you can use your physical your hardware your laptop dvd you can install it from a network and if you have a iso image so as you can see here i have already downloaded a windows 10 iso image this one this is a windows 10 light version so i will be going to install that product so you can edit virtual machine settings and from DVD options here, you can select use ISO image file and you can attach the ISO. Once the ISO is attached, you can power on this virtual machine and the installation is started. Sir, the uh, ISO and uh, the file is uh loading in uh, virtual cd drive or iso uh, drop down menu so uh, can we uh, boot the uh, vm os uh, through usb bootable usb no basically uh, 
you can you should use the ISO file for virtual machine that's a good practice okay sir yep so I'm going to pause for a while and I'm going to install the session the installation is started so that's how you install operating system one more thing when installation is finished right after installation we should remove the installation media right like an ISO file we should remove that ISO file just like whenever we install a operating uh, system on our physical machine from bootable USB so once the installation is finished we remove that USB from the hardware right so also follow the same practice here on virtual virtualization technology means once you finish installing and then you can uh, re you should remove the ISO file right step number six install VMware tools this is a very important step once you finish installation install VMware tools this is on the virtual machine you can use virtual machine without VMware tool but some of the hardware will not work even your mouse performance will be slow even maybe you, you don't have an option of full screen right so that would be a problem so the best practice is whenever you are done with the installation make sure that you install VMware tools so now again the question is from where we can install VMware tools so again the answer is you don't need to download VMware tools from internet you don't need an ISO file for VMware tool because your hypervisor VMware workstation has already VMware tools available for almost all Linux and Windows machine but if you have an operating system which uh, uh, VMware workstation doesn't allow the VMware tools automatically so then in that case you should visit the internet and you can download VMware tool for this specific uh, operating system right so that's the story so we should install VMware tools so what are VMware tools so you can google it VMware tools So basically VMware tool is a set of services that enable several features and various VMware products for better management and seamless user interaction with guest operating system. So that is good. So you should install VMware tools on that setup, right? So we will have to install VMware tool once the installation is finished. Right? So for example, I'm writing Manoj. Uh, this is just an installation step so this is just a formality I'm doing so finally uh, this is done so VMware tools is uh, sorry operating system is installed so we are almost done with we uh, uh, guest operating system installation and the next step is to install VMware tools right so let's take a break for a while again as you can see here the installation is finished so the first step is to remove the installation media right and that's it once the uh, once you remove the installation media then you can select install VMware tools like this so once you click install VMware tools what will happen an ISO file of VMware tools will be attached to this machine and you can install it just like this right so this is not a complete Windows 10 this is just a demo operating system so I have already installed a complete operating system so I will be using that one right so I'm just showing you that thing 
and once the installation VMware tools so this is how you can install VMware tools so we are almost done with these option that uh, install VMware tools and almost finish so finally we have covered uh, almost 70% of today's session right and only 30 percent is remaining so i will try to finish it in uh, 20 minutes so just stay with me for more 20 minutes and we are good to go the installation is finished you can click finish and you, once the machine is restarted and you are good to go so i'm going to power off this virtual machine because i'm not going to use this one right uh, before doing that let me show you one more thing uh, how we can delete virtual machine so two methods if you right click on virtual machine and if you click remove so remove means the virtual machine will not be removed we just remove it from the inventory and that virtual machine files is still stored here as you can see here windows 10 test and once you click the configuration file uh, sorry you can open it again open and you can open, open this file and that virtual machine is again here but if you click manage and delete from disk so it will completely remove that virtual machine does it make sense guys so I have two virtual machine here one is server 2019 and the other one is this so we will be using this these two operating system now so finally uh, we have installed uh, operating system and VMware tools so now the most important portion of today's training is that how these virtual machine will communicate with each other right so first of all let me talk about the VMware workstation sorry VMware ESXi and then we can come to like you can see I have much memory so you can see I'm running two virtual machine at the same time because my laptop has uh, much resources available in your case you should first uh, notice your available resources and then based on those resources you should take action okay so as you can see here we have two virtual machine running on my this uh, laptop and my laptop is connected to a Wi-Fi this is my home Wi-Fi router right so my laptop is connected here to this one so it has a wireless network adapter physical right it is connected my Wi-Fi router has this IP 20.1 so my this physical machine IP should be in which range in this range the default gateway would be 20.1 right and uh, let me also show you and you can see here this is my laptop and I have this IP address is 177 and sorry 18.1 I'm really sorry I thought I'm connected to my other network so let me change it to Eighteen. Right. So that's my story, right? This is my laptop settings now how 
these two virtual machine will connect to, to each other normally and uh, if we have a physical machines we can use switch or we can use access point right and then we can connect those virtual machines so keep in mind that every virtual machine has its own virtual NIC right this virtual machine has nothing to do with your physical Wi-Fi or Ethernet adapter just keep in mind that so this virtual machine has a VM NIC and this virtual machine has a VM NIC right so when we install VMware workstation on operating system on Windows 10 so a VM NET 1 and a VM NET 8 virtual adapters will be installed on your host OS what is host OS your Windows 10 this this machine is host OS so this will be installed right and let me show you practically uh, basically let me change the configuration and then I can explain it to you let me power off these virtual machine and let me then show. give me one second I'm going to restore all the network setting I believe I have did some changes so I will have to restore it right because I have changed the settings so uh, just ignore these things which I'm doing right now We are almost done, right? And you can click OK and OK, good. And you can see here uh, on your physical machine, you can see we have VMNet 1 adapter installed and we have VMNet 8 adapter installed, right? This is my laptop Wi-Fi physical adapter and this is the Ethernet adapter and this is the Bluetooth. So these two are and will be installed whenever you install VMware workstation on your physical machine. No problem Imran. I will upload it to my YouTube channel and you can watch it again. Thank you. Thank you sir for joining. <coughs> So that's the story, right? So now let's let me tell you the difference between these two. Uh, basically, we have three options. Uh, if I go to a virtual machine network setting, The default setting for every virtual machine will be this one. Right? You can see here this virtual machine network adapter is attached to net. And this virtual machine is attached to network 3. Let me also change it. Sorry. Let me show you this one. This is attached to bridge. So we have the, uh, three options. One option is called bridge. The other option is called net. The other option is called host only. So we have two options, three options. 
for virtual machine network adapter setting bridge net host only if you want to connect these two virtual machine with each other make sure that both virtual machine network adapter setting should be same so again let me ask you a question vm net 10 sorry windows 10 is connected to net a network adapter is connected to net and this is connected this mcc base 27 vm is connected to bridge so now answer me will will these two communication will be able to communicate with each other or not the one is connected to net the other one is connected to bridge answer me that whether these two virtual machine would be able to communicate with each other or not anyone I would need your answer mr. Pavan mr. Manoj Yasin yes or no no okay no idea and no Pavan you are right basically it's like uh, like you have two switches right this is switch number one this is switch number two and this is switch number three right so I have three switches one is called net the other one is called host only and this one is called bridged right so make sure if you connect one virtual machine here to this switch and the other machine is connected to this switch then these two virtual machine will not be able to communicate make sure that both virtual machines should be attached to same switch so if you want to uh, connect these two virtual machine change the network adapter setting keep the network adapter setting of both virtual machines same if this is net also use this one as a net if this is bridge use this as a bridge so now let's start with the host only option right what is host only option host only option means that this is host this is my host windows 10 mean host host right host option means that this if we select host only host only means vm net 1 net mean vm net 8 bridge mean vm net 0 these are the default setting we can change it right so vm net 1 so these two virtual machine will be able if, to communicate with each other only and with host only. So if there is another laptop connected here, a physical machine, if these two virtual machine wants to connect with the internet, so in host only, those these two virtual machine will not be able to communicate outside. So if I select a host only option for this one and this virtual machine so these two virtual machine let me change it to host only right let me change it to host only host only means that these two virtual machine will only be communicating with each other and with this windows 10 machine using this adapter vmnet1 adapter so i will uh, uh, give ip address to this one like for example 10.0.0.1 
and I will assign one IP address to this one and this one. So only these three machines will be able to communicate, but if this virtual machine wants to connect with the internet, it won't be able. So in host only, virtual machine can only communicate with each other and only with the host operating system using VMNet one adapter. And you won't these virtual and you won't be able to access these virtual machine from outside, like from physical machine, or uh, neither these virtual machine will be able to communicate outside. So what is the use case of host only? For example, you are testing an application, right? And you don't want that application to access the other machine or other physical machine or to access the internet or you don't want other machine to access those virtual machine from outside then in that case you can use host only right bridge means that if we select bridged by default the bridge option is auto so auto means that if your physical adapter is connected the Wi-Fi adapter is connected and if I select bridge option the virtual machine virtual neck will be bridged with the physical adapter and automatically this IP address the in this range the IP address will be assigned to each virtual machine right sure Manoj take your time thank you thank you for staying with us so bridged option means that virtual machine will be bridged to your physical network right like you can see here I have this physical Wi-Fi uh, this is my Wi-Fi adapter right so if I select bridged for this virtual machine what will happen let me also power on this virtual machine what will happen this VM will be assigned an IP address in the range of my physical network and I will be able to access my laptop this machine from outside the network so this machine will be considered as a physical machine just like and you have a physical laptop okay So uh, that's the story and bridge if you can see here uh, this is my Windows 10 machine I just changed the network setting of this Windows 10 machine into bridge right by default the option is automatic which means that if my Ethernet adapter is connected if my physical Ethernet adapter or Wi-Fi connected this virtual machine will be connected to that physical network so now you can see here the VM IP address is 192.168.18.180 right because this VM is now a part of my physical network and if I select the network adapter to host only right so what will happen you can see here the network setting is disconnected and it will be connected now and this virtual machine will be not a part of the physical network and you can see here it is now configured with some other IP address 191 range IP address so from where this IP came basically in VMware workstation when you go to virtual network editor right you can see here uh, we have three networks configured VMNet 0 which is a bridge auto bridging the other one is host only so if I select host only you can see here a DHCP server is configured here and this is by default check right so which is why our virtual machine will be uh, assign an IP address in this range but you can also uh, disable DHCP for the host only network the reason is 
maybe you are practicing DHCP server on your virtual machine. So if you when you install DHCP server and also this DHCP is running, so you won't be able to do practice of DHCP server. So make sure you can disable DHCP for your host only network and that's it. So I think we have learned so far that uh, the difference between host only and bridged. One more question. If my laptop is connected to Ethernet uh, switch but with, uh, using Ethernet and also Wi-Fi and I want this virtual machine let's suppose this is my VM01 and this is my 02. My use case is this is a scenario. Let me change the font color. Connect VM01 to Ethernet. Right? Like bridge. Make it bridge but to Internet. And connect VM02 to Wi Fi. This is also bridge. Right? So by default, the network, the bridge setting option is auto bridging. As you can see here. Auto bridging means that if Wi Fi is connected, then virtual machine will be connected to Wi Fi network. If Ethernet is connected, then virtual machine will be connected to Ethernet. But if you have this scenario, the one I just explained that connect VM01 to Ethernet bridged. So in that case, you should configure your network setting from here. How? For example, I want VMNet0 to be bridged, but not auto. I want to connect the VMNet0 adapter to my Wi-Fi. I think this is my Wi-Fi and I want to add another network. You can also add another network like this and you can change the setting to bridge and you can use Ethernet and you can apply that setting. So now let me show you once again. So I just change the network adapter settings of my VMware workstation based on my requirements. So the purpose of doing this that to show you guys that any type of network can be configured in your VMware workstation. All you need to understand the concept of this, right? So now you can see here. By default, we learned that by default we have only three options. Which option? Host only which is VMNet1. The other is NET, which is VMNet8. And the third one is Bridge, which is VMNet0. Right? But we have just changed it. Bridged with Wi-Fi is VMNet0. Bridged with Ethernet is now VMNet2. Right? So I just changed my settings to these options. Right? So now let's see how we can use those options here on the virtual machine. So once you click settings and if you click host network adapter and under custom option you can see we have VMNet0 and VMNet1 so if I select VMNet2, which means that I just connect my this VM to my Ethernet network. And if I used VMNet0, which means that this VM is now a part of my Wi-Fi network. So currently my Wi-Fi is connected. So I will use uh, VMNet0 for both of these virtual machines so they can communicate with my sorry I will use VMNet0 and that's it 
and I will also power on this virtual machine. Any question? So that was the scenario. And now last topic is that in which case we can use net option. So normally uh, net option uh, is used when you have two virtual machine and you don't want those virtual machine to access from outside from the physical network but still you want to give this virtual machine access to to go to the internet and to do browsing and all the stuff so in that case you can use a private network option net option right just like we have a lab we have a wi-fi we have our own network let's suppose this is my network right so if i am going outside my adapter has a public IP address and this public IP address is doing the translation for me. So you can also build a private network on your VMware workstation. So again, it's a very uh, technical discussion. Uh, so uh, I will keep it uh, very simple that just keep in mind that if you want these two virtual machines to communicate with each other, and also at the same time you want them to access the internet but you don't want the outside machines to access these virtual machines then in that case you can use net option right and you can like you can build a private network on your VMware workstation right so no one from the outside will be able to see these virtual machine because the IP address of these virtual machine will be different and this IP address or other physical IP address assigned to your physical adapter will do the translation for those virtual machines. So, to to uh, and summarize to summarize this option, just keep in mind that we can use host only and bridge option. Just keep in mind to to, to make it simple for you guys. And inshallah, some other time because we are running out of time, so we will briefly discuss net option in details. But for now just uh, we I will conclude this session almost we have covered uh, every topic related to VMware workstation that how we can install this product how we can do the basic configuration and how we can create virtual machine how we can do the basic virtual machine management and installing its operating system and VMware tools and all the network stuff so this was all about today's session uh, okay so again I'm uh, going to give you one minute if you guys have any question if not I can conclude this session and I will leave you guys to do the rest of your things no question so far okay also uh, I will I will be uploading this video on my YouTube channel my name is the, the YouTube channel name is this one so feel free to watch that video the recording on this YouTube lecture and if you guys have any question you can email me on my Gmail or you can just uh, send me a message directly on my Facebook take care and thank you for joining today's session